Good, you're back. I'm Neom, and today's episode is about the deadliest sound in history. Leave a like if you enjoy, subscribe if you want to be a subscriber, click the bell to warn that the British are coming, and yada yada. Let's get into it. I know, I know, you clicked on this video expecting to see me rant about that one iPhone alarm. You know the one. That one that sends your hypnagogic mind into a state of apocalyptic perturbation. But no. This video is about something else entirely. You got off easy this time, iPhone. This story begins on a volcanic island off the coast of South Sumatra in Indonesia in the year 1883. We've all seen the bomb slash mushroom cloud size comparison videos. Well, this explosion from the Java Sea weighs in with a VEI of 6, or about 200 megatons of TNT. That's about 13 times the explosive energy of the Little Boy Bomb of Hiroshima, and 4 times that of the Tsar Bomba, the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated. This blast came from Mount Krakatoa, a volcano on the island of Krakatoa. All of humanity's finest minds and centuries of history, and nature still makes our devices look like a balloon pop. I have basically no knowledge of volcanoes and geology, so forgive my layman's level of terminology, but imagine if something like Krakatoa happened today, and the resulting seismology from the shifting of tectonic plates sent tremors across the transect of the lithosphere powerful enough to turn a dormant edifice active, causing additional eruptions, discharging even more pyroclastic flows and brecciated pumice into the belt. And I don't even want to think about what would happen if it reached a cordillera. Where was I? The eruption of Krakatoa sent volcanic rock flying across six square miles around the mountain, and the shockwave gave rise to tsunamis that would destroy nearly 300 nearby villages, kill an estimated 36,400 people, and injure thousands more. Now, picture you're standing next to a jet engine right as the jet is taking off. You get a full 142 decibels straight to the face, lose your hearing, and get taken to airport security for sneaking out onto the tarmac. In fact, it only takes about 120 decibels to instantly cause hearing damage, and even as low as 80 decibels if the exposure is prolonged. The sound that was released after the blast of Krakatoa was estimated at 172 from 100 miles away. With the speed of sound being 760 miles per hour, the sound would reach 100 miles at just over 8.5 minutes, and anyone living or sailing within that 100 miles would lose their hearing instantly. Anyone within about 50 miles would receive severe organ damage from the sound alone and would literally be killed by the prolonged exposure, if tsunamis, shockwaves, and flying debris didn't kill them first. 172 decibels is extremely loud, and that was from 100 miles away. At the source itself, decibel levels would have been nearing the limit for how loud it is even possible for a sound to be, in Earth's atmosphere at least. Anything above 194 decibels is literally outside our definition of what sound is, if I understood my research correctly. Please remember, I'm not an expert, and this hat is just a prop. So, you ask me, if it was that loud at 100 miles, then how far did the sound travel? I'm glad you asked. The sound was reported to have been heard in central Australia in the town of Alice Springs, 2,200 miles away, and as far as the island of Rodriguez off the coast of Madagascar, 3,000 miles away. And even then, sailors near Rodriguez Island who heard it compared the sound to that of nearby cannon fire, making it the loudest sound in Earth's recorded history. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe for more content, ring the bell to be notified about new videos, and comment what you want to learn about next. I'm Neon, and I'll see you next time.